After it was understood that something of value could be had in Virginia, especially tobacco, many people became interested in migrating. Between 1600 and 1640, about 80,000 people left England for Virginia. As we have been discussing, the economy in Europe was an inflationary nightmare because of all the precious metal that was brought back by the Spanish. This created a surplus of unskilled labor that had turned into adventurers. And the production of tobacco demanded labor. Of the 80,000 people that took a chance on Virginia, about four out of every five of them were indentured servants. Indentured servants had their voyage paid for by a plantation owner in exchange for seven years of labor. At the end of the term, they were supposed to be established with a parcel of land and the basic necessities to begin harvesting on it. The issue was one of practicality. The people who had paid for the labor uh, to migrate these indentured servants had no reason to try and get these laborers through their term. Combine that with the overall miserable living conditions and nearly all of the indentured servants died before their term was up. It's quite possible that 19 of every 20 indentured servants died before their term was complete. As the indentured servant pool dried up, the planters would begin enslaving forced African migrants. But still more and more people who had the means of attempting to profit off of Virginia's potential would arrive. As more people moved, they encroached further upon the Powhatans. The planters also ran into problems as the land that had the greatest value that was to closest or easiest access to the ocean was snatched up. Finally, with so many people producing tobacco, the prices would become depressed. To try and solve the developing problem with the Powhatans, the colony negotiated territorial rights that were not supposed to be accessed to European settlers. But as the settlers became more concerned about the tobacco prices, they became more desperate for land that they could best utilize. By 1675, they were fighting with one another. As part of their effort to exploit the Powhatans' land, the settlers actually used a conflict with a different tribe as their reason began warring. By the winter of 1675 and 6, the Powhatans had had enough and were in pursuit of revenge. Into this scenario came Nathaniel Bacon. Bacon was a Cambridge-educated gentleman who had come to America to become a planter, but when the situation didn't develop as he liked, he began to pursue opportunities at the natives' expense. He recruited former indentured servants, runaway servants, and slaves to attack all native tribes, both those that were friendly and hostile to the Virginia colony. The conflict became regarded as Bacon's rebellion. Much of the frustration was directed against the colonial governor after it all. He was unpopular for raising taxes while tobacco prices plummeted, and as the countryside flared up, he began to try and appease by promising a newly elected assembly. But once the assembly was seated, they turned on him, made the government more responsive to the common man by, among other things, providing everyone with a vote. Bacon's rebellion was investigated by Parliament. They determined that the goals were mostly to exterminate the native population near the European settlements. While that hadn't occurred, it was eventually determined by Virginians that the rebellion was beneficial as it had provided an outlet for social tension and had increased the amount of land adequate for investment.